And I am showing you also in this video that it is the same shoulder. This is the same shoulder that's in the Rogan video. TJ Dillashaw's left shoulder dislocated on this takedown and the refs allowed him to continue fighting. He lost, and of course afterwards he revealed that he had dislocated it probably 20 times in training camp. Fans. Here we go. All right, I got three stories for you guys in this video. Normally I would stretch these out, but I'm leaving for Dallas for Jiu-Jitsu World League with my kids tomorrow, and so I gotta get out of here right now. So here's the deal. We're gonna talk about James Vick getting put into a medically induced coma after a knockout, one of the scariest stories I've ever heard. That's about as close as you get to getting killed uh, doing mixed martial arts as you're gonna get. And uh, we're going to look at that knockout again and then actually evaluate, you know, where it's like, hey, this was close, man. This is as close. You're gonna, this is an, a, a UFC fighter, not that far removed from his UFC career, still fighting. And he literally almost got killed in there. It's pretty nuts. And it's about the worst knockout I've ever seen. Uh, but yeah, he's in a coma and uh, it is a gnarly, gnarly story. The other one we're going to talk about is uh, the report that Mike Tyson and Jake Paul's fight could be canceled and canceled as close as the day before the fight. Like we're talking or hours before the fight. This is a real report that uh, that that is actually on the table for the Jake Paul and Mike Tyson fight, which is no good. And then the crown jewel of this video is I am going to show you that uh, you know how you remember TJ Dillashaw, you know, remember remember him? I mean, I know it's been a really long time since he's fought, not that long, but, you know, he's retired, and uh, his physique, dude, he wasn't lying. You know how these guys are like, as soon as I retire, I'm going to get diesel. Uh, he looks diesel. But the story is, I think Joe Rogan is the one who ended his career. I'm not joking. I think I found the video that destroyed TJ Dillashaw's shoulder, and I think it's Rogan that did it. And so I'm going to show you that video uh, shortly. But first, let's look at how diesel he looks. Yeah, so that's TJ Dillashaw. Every single one of these guys is all, the second I'm not competing, I'm going to get jacked. And he looks pretty jacked. So, let, I mean, let's actually, let's play, let's see, like, you know, let's play uh, who is more chemically enhanced jacked, me or TJ Dillashaw. There you go. You guys, there's option one, option two, option one, option two, option one, option two. Just saying, dude, he looks pretty jacked. But uh, TJ, next time you're in a bodybuilding contest, you should know. You should get a sweat on first, dude. I cheated on that. I cheated, you know. But I also found this. Look at this, you guys. I found this is him. Uh, he's like, check out the, the best one-armed man in the world. And he's kicking the bag. Now we're going to play Who Would You Rather Get Kicked By? TJ Dillashaw or Jesse Fire. What happened? Where'd it go? I gotta start it over. There you go. It's good, dude. All right, option one, option two. Oops. All right, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna go with neither. I don't want to say who I would rather get kicked by because I think Tilly DJ's got a pretty good kick there, but you know, whatever, whatever. That's how you shoehorn yourself into a story. All right. So let's go. Uh, let's look at what I'm talking about when it comes to um, actually, we'll do that one last. We're going to do that one last about the Mike. Ty I'm sorry. The uh, the Dillashaw getting his entire career destroyed by Joe Rogan on video. And I'm not sure anybody ever figured that out uh, because it's not like it was a secret that this happened. All right, so um, let's talk Mike Tyson and Jake Paul first. And by the way, if you have not subscribed to the channel yet, why don't you go ahead and do that and help me out? You know, it's very, very helpful. You, I mean, I don't know, man. I don't even know if it matters, dude. YouTube is like, no, it doesn't matter. For this kind of content, I actually don't think it matters. I think it's just like, if you're watching the videos, then, you know, YouTube's gonna suggest it. For my other content, though, it absolutely matters. Because my other content that had, talks about uh, this guy back here, straight up, you, it is unlikely you will see it if you're not subscribed. So if you're interested in what I'm talking about over there, you should definitely subscribe. And it is helpful to me if you do. Uh, all right, so check this out. Mike Tyson versus Jake Paul could be canceled on the day of the fight, okay? I saw that, and I'm like, you have to be kidding me, right? Like, I've been talking about this fight for how long? So following a medical scare in May, legendary pugilist Iron Mike Tyson will undergo last-minute medical test before his fight against Jake Paul, okay? Tyson is scheduled to compete in his first professional boxing match in nearly 20 years when he returns to the ring to, for a scrap with the problem child in Arlington, Texas, yada, yada, yada. Originally, the bout was expected to go down 80,000 seat AT&T in July, but Tyson suffered a medical emergency during the cross-country flight that prompted the delay. Um, unfortunately, yada, 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 we already know all about the... Um, 
you know, uh, what do you call it? The uh, ulcer. Okay, but here you go. However, there is still a chance that the bout could be scrapped mere hours before he's scheduled to make the walk. Okay. TDLR is aware of media reports regarding an episode involving Mike Tyson. At present, Mr. Tyson and Mr. Paul have met the medical requirements for this event. The Texas Department of Licensing and Regulation Communication Manager, T. LaMange, told World Boxing News. Before the event, TDLR will conduct a pre will conduct pre-fight physicals to ensure the health of both fighters. And according to the regulatory guidelines from the Association of Boxing Commissions, all boxers competing shall receive a pre-fight physical examination by a ringside physician who certifies in writing whether or not the boxer is is physically fit or uh, to safely compete. Clearly, uh, this is not a new practice. But when you factor in when you factor in a eighty a fifty eight year old fighter with a pre existing condition, there's a possibility that Tyson might not be cleared to fight in the eleventh hour. Now, I would, um, you know, I would say normally that like, okay, that's kind of ridiculous. Like that's not actually going to happen. But if there is any kind of liability involved, you know, who knows, dude? You know, you just never know. You just never know what's going to happen, man. Um, the fact that they're, the fact that we're even having this conversation is very concerning to me. But uh, Mike Tyson's showdown will be contested over an eight, eight, two minute rounds. Um, the fighters will wear 14 ounce gloves instead of the typical 10 ounce. That's not going to make any difference to anybody. Uh, despite those changes, both fighters are confident they can finish the other inside the distance. Um, and more stuff about how Mike Tyson says he's going to, uh, he's going to knock him out. And then Paul says he's going to, he's saying that he's, it's going to be my funeral. He's saying it's going to be my wake. He's going to kill Jake Paul, all these things. That's why I love Mike. I respect him, but we're not friends anymore until November 15th. I'm knocking this motherfucker out. We're going to see, we're going to see who's dead. <laughs> Okay, so here's the deal. Again, I will just say, when everybody keeps bringing up those old fights of Tyson's, Tyson was not training for those. Like, straight up was not training. And I realize it's 20 years later. I realize he's aged. I understand that. But he's very focused and he's training very hard and he's not fighting a world-class heavyweight boxer. He's fighting Jake Paul, okay? And Jake Paul's good, but he ain't that good. Not good enough to where we're talking about like, oh, you know, well, it's, you know, he's not like he's, he's not fighting Francis Botha in, his, in, in the prime of his career, at, at a time when Tyson does not care whether he wins or loses and he's just doing it to pay his bills and he says that in the middle of the ring, okay? Like, that stuff does matter a lot, okay? Now, let's move over to the, um, let's move over to the James Vick story, which is, uh, again, very gnarly. And then I'm gonna show you that Jay, uh, Joe Rogan ended TJ Dillashaw's career, okay? And he did it with a kick. That's That's what I'm telling you, okay? When we get to that story, what I'm telling you is I'm going to show you a video of Joe Rogan ending TJ Dillashaw's career with a kick, and no one realized it at the time, but this kick dislodged TJ's shoulder, I think, okay? That's what I'm talking about. All right, so let's move over to the James Vick story, and let's just, as a refresher, okay? Remember, he fought Justin Gaethje. He was very nasty to Justin Gaethje in the buildup, and then Gaethje starched him in the first round. It was a pretty gnarly knockout. Then he uh, lost a decision to Paul Felder where he got punched a lot. Then he got knocked out twice in the first round uh, in the UFC and he left, okay? And then he went to ex-MMA uh, and he got starched by Andre Fialo, okay? So that's where you're at with James Vick going into um, this incident that happened this year, okay? So he comes out of retirement um, and he goes and fights in karate combat. So... I don't know if you guys have seen this. If you haven't seen it, uh, prepare for the gnarliest knockout that you've probably ever seen. Um, but anyway, so I did not know this. This just came out September 12th. This came out like a day ago, right? UFC veteran James Vick unconscious for two days from self-indu- self-induced coma uh, after viral KO loss per karate combat press. Okay, well, James Vick didn't say put me in a coma. It was a medically induced coma. He was put in a medically induced coma after this knockout for two days, Okay. Tell me how scary that is, dude. So, UFC veteran James Vick has taken a lot of damage in the later stages of his career. Okay, actually, let's just watch the KO first, and then we'll talk about it. I want to see this insane KO, the kick. Vinny, can you pull up Alves? That was a nice kick. I know how to do that kick, just so y'all know. Oh, yeah. my God. That's, that's yeah. it. Were you there live? Yeah, yeah I was there live, Bro. and it was such a successful event. It ruined my whole mood. I just couldn't be happy after that. Probably how the long? best thing that ever happened to Karate Oh, no, no. <laughs> how long was he out for? A couple Great. days. No. Yeah, they put him in a self-induced coma. Are you serious? Yeah, and he had a respiratory. Just make sure he stays breathing. I went to him when he woke up. He's like, what do you catch me with? I'm like, switch kid. He's like, oh, man, I want to get back in. 
Oh, come on. <laughs> is he okay? Is he okay now? Uh, yeah, thank God he's okay, man. But I can't morally want to do that. I'm not going to put him back in there. And Good man, dude. I like him, dude. I like him. I've never seen him talk before. I like that guy, dude. That's a karate combat guy, huh? So, uh, man, I'm, I'm embarrassed. I should have been more familiar with who that guy is. But uh, I like that guy. I really do. I want to watch that again, actually. That, I want to see this insane KO, the kick. Vinny, can you pull up Alves? That was a nice kick. I know how to do that kick, just so y'all know. Oh, yeah. my God. That's, that's yeah. it. Were you there live? Yeah, yeah, I was there live, and it was such a successful event. It ruined my whole mood. I just couldn't be happy after that. Probably how the long? best thing that ever happened to Karate Oh, Kong. no, no. <laughs> how long was he out for? Like, a couple great. days. No. Yeah, they put him in a self-induced coma. Are you serious? Yeah, and he had a respiratory. Just make sure he stays breathing. I went to him when he woke up. He's like, what did he catch me with? I'm like, switch kid. He's like, oh, man, I want to get back in there. <laughs> <laughs> Is he okay? Is he okay? No. Uh, yeah, thank God he's okay, man. But I can't morally want to do that. I'm not going to put him back. Like there and yeah dude i mean <laughs> jesus man i mean like these guys are so tough and it's it's one of those things where uh like this is one of those things where as a like as a there's 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 fighters and there's fans and then there are fans who are fighters you know you know what i mean and like i i think people who have never fought fall into this trap where they see a guy who keeps getting knocked out and they have this like i don't know they have this weird view of them where they're like oh hey hey he's that knockout bot and you're like yeah that's the same guy and they they see that as like the guy oh this guy's a joke like oh yeah that's that guy that keeps getting knocked out and you're like yeah that's the dude that got starched unconscious five straight times and he still wants to keep fighting. Like to me, I'm like, that guy is a fucking gangster. I don't think he should fight. I, I absolutely do not think he should fight. But there are things you can control in your life and there are things that you can't. You know what I mean? It's like you don't, you don't control when your chin goes. But you control whether you still want to compete. And the fact that you are getting knocked unconscious when you go in there every time and you're like nah dude i can make this work it's like you know like that shit's gangster to me you know it's they're they're too tough for their own good it's like bro you got put in a medically induced coma i i don't know if you guys ever heard of that like i mean i i mean i've sporadically heard of that but in mma that's super rare dude that is uh that's a scary story dude there's nothing else to that story that's it just that he got that that after that knockout he got put into a medically induced coma and he still wants to fight. That is wild, dude. Um, whoa! Look at look at look at uh, Brian Ortega's picture. Is that really what he looks like right now? He looks out of shape. Is that is that real? Huh? That might just be a weird picture. That seems that that would be weird if he's that out of shape going into this fight. But um. Anyway, let's move right along over to the crown jewel where I discovered how TJ Dillashaw's career actually ended. All right, let's move over to TJ Dillashaw. So let's, let, let's listen to this doctor explain. Um, let's listen to this doctor explain what happened with TJ's shoulder. And I am showing you also in this video that it is the same shoulder. This is the same shoulder that's in the Rogan video. TJ Dillashaw's left shoulder dislocated on this takedown, and the refs allowed him to continue fighting. He lost, and of course afterwards he revealed that he had dislocated it probably 20 times in training camp. Okay, 20 times dislocated, same shoulder. Let's continue a little bit here. Welcome back everybody, I'm Dr. Brian Suter, and if you're new here and you enjoy learning about the medical side of what we see in the sports world, then be sure and subscribe to my channel for all future videos. Dillashaw had severe instability in his left shoulder coming into this fight, and it was early on here on this takedown where he puts his left arm behind him, and as he tries to brace his fall, that leads to a repeat dislocation. In this position, the humerus or the arm bone is like a golf ball and the socket of the shoulder coming from the scapula or the shoulder blade is like a golf tee. So whenever he lands, the force of the ground transmits up through his arm and because his humerus is a little bit shifted anterior or forward, that imparts an additional force which causes that shoulder to dislocate in this anterior direction in front of his chest. 
This is a situation that typically should not result in your shoulder dislocating, but when you have previous damage like Dillashaw revealed in his interview, these little tiny movements will make that shoulder more prone to coming out. Right let's when we knew see, something was wrong. And and let's see if we can figure out where that damage came from when, uh, oops, I didn't realize I was so off kilter. Uh, when we look at the Rogan video shortly, but again, let's just listen to, let's hear this guy out and then I'm going to take you straight to the Rogan video and then we can talk about that because uh, TJ was not ready to uh, get kicked like he did. I actually saw Dillashaw multiple times try to get his own shoulder back in place. Here early on, he's trying to apply a little bit of that axial traction to sort of pull the arm forward to allow the ball to relocate in the socket. When he gets into this position, we can see that clear flattening of the muscles of the deltoid here on the shoulder, suggesting that anterior dislocation because you lose that conformity, that shape of those nice deltoid muscles. Okay, so you guys get it, right? So I pulled this video up the other day uh, at my gym and I was hanging out with some of the some of the children at six blades okay and we were talking about Rogan's uh, we were talking about Rogan's uh, kicks and in the middle of this video see if you can find the moment where TJ Dillashaw I believe took his shoulder and made it to where it was so weak that it was going to get dislocated over and over and over certified beast I mean just listen to the whipping sounds of his roundhouses he has trained with some of the best coaches and fighters, and they're all impressed with his kicking. And look at, here's the key too. Watch these guys catching his kicks, okay? Look at the way that they leverage themselves in order to, to hold pads for someone who can kick as hard as Rogan. For example, this is Mark Delabrotti, one of the international conservators of Muay Thai. Then this is multiple world champion Liam Harrison. One of the best Muay Thai fighters of all time, barely able to handle holding pads for Joe Rogan. Many people say that Taekwondo does not work in Muay Thai and MMA, but that nonsense. That is not exactly true. To examine this, one of the best examples is through analyzing Joe Rogan's kicks. It doesn't work by itself. Many people don't know this today. Rogan is not just a BJJ black belt. He was the USA national champion in Taekwondo. His Taekwondo kicks are as high level as anyone. Fight fan. Here we go. Welcome back to another There you episode. go. Right there. Right there. Okay. Those guys are holding pads for Rogan, bracing themselves, whatever. Look at TJ. Same shoulder. Same shoulder. Look at how he's how he's holding pads for Rogan to do this this spinning kick. Go to striking breakdowns, where there won't be any cancer Look at that. Joe Rogan. In this episode, we feature how Taekwondo can be utilized in real fights, such as MMA. And, and look at how young he was, dude. Okay. Now, do I know for sure that that's what happened? No. But is that how you want to catch Anyone. a kick? And then all of a sudden, that shoulder? Fight fans, welcome back Look to at that another one, episode dude. of Striking Breakdowns, where there won't be any cancelling of Joe Rogan. In this episode, we feature how Taekwondo can be used oh. by fights such as MMA and Muay Thai. Dude. Right? Am I crazy or not? Am I crazy? Is that going to weaken your shoulder, your shoulder joint to hold a pad out like that and let, let Rogan do a spinning wheel kick into it? And let it just spin you around like that? That cannot be good for your shoulder. Fans, welcome back to another episode of Striking Breakdowns, where there won't be any cancelling of Joe Rogan. In this episode, we feature how Taekwondo can be utilized in real fights, such as MMA. Is that even, like, honestly, is that how you're supposed to hold? I, that can't be how you're supposed to do it. And Muay Thai. But oh. first, a message from Joe Rogan about Taekwondo's effectiveness. When um, I first got into martial arts, the martial art I got into was Taekwondo. And, and you know, as we're seeing in MMA, Taekwondo is not the most effective martial art. But there's some techniques in Taekwondo that are very effective, and we're just starting to see them now. One of the big ones is the turning side kick or the spinning back kick. Even one of the greatest MMA fighters of all time considered Joe Rogan's spinning back kicks the best he's ever seen. The spinning back that's honestly that clip right there is one of that's one of my favorite clips ever um ever in martial arts is, is George St. Pierre saying can I film that because I want to learn that's when George St. Pierre was like had run through the division twice you know and he said can I film that because I want to learn for the best 
he's super humble. Like that people think that, uh, who, like, I don't know, people who have never spent any significant time in like a, in a martial arts environment that like, I, I feel like they think that they walk in there and all these guys are like, dude, I'm ready to kill. That's not what it's at least not in my, the gyms that I've been in. Everybody's looking to learn. Like everybody's like that. You know, my favorite clip ever. I put this up on, uh, on Instagram at the time was, uh, when Shanji stopped class and had Victor Hugo, who you guys might be aware is like, I mean, between him, him and Marigali are, there is no argument about who the best, you know, fighters in a gi in the world are. Like there's a, that's a non-conversation. You have Victor, you have Marigali in terms of, you know, jujitsu and a gi. It's not, this is not, this is not a con, like a, what's the right word? A controversial statement, right? So you got literally the number one guy in the fucking world. And he's doing, and we're just doing like hip escapes, like warm up hip escapes. Okay. The literally probably the most basic thing that anyone has does in jujitsu, which is just learning to, you know, get on your side and scoot your hips out and get space between you and your opponent. Okay. This is like the simplest thing there is. And Shundi is stopping him and he's, and he's, he's showing Victor how to improve his hip escape. Like white belts learn hip escapes. White belts get good, very good at hip escape. Everybody knows how to do a fucking hip escape. And Victor Hugo is literally the best jiu-jitsu practitioner in the world. And Shanti's like, it's not perfect. And Victor's just super humble, like, it, you know, improving his hip escape. And I'm like, that's the best thing ever. That's what it's like in for, for like, uh, you know, and, and again, George St. Pierre asking Joe Rogan, a not professional fighter, to show him how to do a better spinning back kick, you know, or a side kick or whatever. Anyway, I love that clip. And uh, I think Rogan might have... I think he might have hurt his shoulder, dude. I think he might have hurt TJ Dillashaw's shoulder. That was uh it's not for a guy whose shoulder ended up being the reason he can't fight anymore. That particular shoulder, I'm just saying, dude. 